In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, has been revealed as a light to the nations. Let us bring our darkness to his light, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured and to feed one another with understanding through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who are being saved. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the first letter of Peter. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. Indeed, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying a a in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this parable with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. 
I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, as it always is for the fourth week of Easter in the church's year. But that's a bit strange, isn't it? Why in the middle of the Easter season do we suddenly have Good Shepherd Sunday? We think of the Good Shepherd as a powerful image of pastoral care, a very popular image right throughout the church's history. The care that God has for us in Christ in our everyday lives and the sort of care that we see in the Gospels in Jesus' ministry, Jesus' healing, Jesus' feeding of hungry people, Jesus' exorcising of demons, getting rid of evil. Jesus works and teaching that embody compassion and care. But actually, in John's Gospel, the image of the Good Shepherd is really about Jesus' care for us in a very specific way, and that is in dying for us and in rising again. And that's how he is, the Good Shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep, he says. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. Jesus as the good shepherd goes beyond any merely human shepherd, no matter how wonderful, in risking his life for us, but also not only in dying, but also taking back that life because he is the Lord of life, the source of all life. And that's how he shows love, how he shows pastoral care. And that's why Good Shepherd Sunday is right in the middle of the Easter Sunday, as the Easter season, as we celebrate the resurrection. Today's reading is only the first part of that longer parable, and it focuses not so much on the image of the Good Shepherd, although that is there, but it focuses rather on the, on the image of the gate, the door. I am the gate, Jesus says two times, twice, in our passage. Ancient sheepfolds, ancient pens, were um, a, a stone wall about perhaps a, a, about a metre high with one gate only. And there were several flocks that were put in there together at night to secure the pen at night, to secure the pen against the dangers of cold and wild animals, marauding animals. And the gatekeeper was there at the gate to guard it. And only the shepherds of the various flocks would go in and out via the gate. Anyone, of course, climbing over the walls was by definition a thief, someone who has come to steal and kill and destroy, as John puts it. So in other words, the gate of the sheepfold, the sheep pen, has a dual function. On the one hand, it is to keep the sheep safe, protected at night, because they're very vulnerable. But at the same time, it's also to give them access out, so it brings them in at night, it allows them out during the day to pasture, where they can be led by their own shepherd, recognise their own shepherd's voice, and the shepherd will lead them to food and water and to lying around in the sun. And that is precisely the image Jesus uses of the abundant life that he gives us through his death and resurrection. He is the gate, the gateway to life, the one who gives us access on the one hand to safety and on the other hand to nourishment and nurture. Well, what is the meaning of this text today for us, especially as we continue in the COVID-19 crisis? Well, one thing it's not saying is that God will protect us from getting coronavirus. Uh, some Christians have said that, um, and it's quite extraordinary that they would say that. There are dangers for the sheep, for us, very real dangers. But the message is that Christ will protect us in them, in the midst of them, in whatever happens to us. Christ will be there with us, 
for us, never abandoning us, never running away, but keeping us always, whatever we go through, in God's hands, in the Father's hands. That's part of the message. And the other part of the message is that God continues to nurture us, to enable us to grow in hope, in strength of heart, in wisdom, enabling us to grow more and more into God, to commit more on more of our lives into God's hands. We actually give very little of ourselves into God's hands, as a matter of fact. And so we're called to give ourselves over to God more fully, more completely, to help us to grow in love and in the service of others. Slowly, more and more, allowing ourselves to trust, to love in place of fear. 1 John tells us that perfect love casts out fear. The opposite of love is not always hate, it is sometimes, but it can also be fear. So that we grow together in that love, we grow together in goodness and holiness, in care for others. Whatever happens, however tough the going is, we are called to replace fear and anxiety slowly but surely with love and trust, a love that spills out to others and to the earth itself. And this, as a matter of fact, is a much deeper level of assurance and comfort for us than the view that nothing bad will ever happen to us as Christians. That is a false view. It's uh, certainly not true of Jesus himself and his own ministry, which ended in death. Nothing ultimately bad will happen to us. That is the message. And as we hope and pray, nothing bad will happen to anybody else, or for that matter, to the earth itself. We're part of the flock of the Good Shepherd, the gate, the one who died and rose for us, and the one who, a little later, John will say, brings other sheep, not of this fold, not just insiders, but outsiders also brought in, to give us all life, to give us true, deep, abundant life, lasting life. And so we are called this morning by the gospel to entrust ourselves more and more to Christ, who is our gate, who as the gateway gives us ultimate security and safety within ourselves and among ourselves, in all our troubles and dangers, who is our eternal presence, our eternal present, always with us, always nurturing us to become our true selves in Christ, to become our true selves in communion with one another and in care for others and for the world. Thanks be to God. Let us now affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world.
God our Father, you tend us as a shepherd tends the flock. We pray for the Church of God as it reaches out to care for and protect all who are lost, all who long to belong to a fellowship of love. Teach us how to become church again in this time of fear and isolation. We pray especially for St Mary's, for our vicar, Father Jan, and for all our leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they may hear and recognise the voice of the Good Shepherd, providing care for those who are sick and endangered, and justice for those who are oppressed. We pray especially for countries suffering illness, unemployment and privation through the coronavirus, that their leaders may show compassion, honesty and wisdom, putting the well-being of people and the earth above money and power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in any kind of distress or pain at this time, that they may know they are held safely in God's hands and that nothing can snatch them from the Good Shepherd. Especially we pray for those known to us now whom we name in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died in the faith of Christ, giving thanks for their wisdom and love, those who have gone through the gateway of death into life eternal. And we pray for those who have died unknown and unloved. Especially we pray for those whose year's mind occurs at this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ appeared among his disciples, showing them his hands and his side, and said to them, Peace be with you. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. He is the true Paschal Lamb who has offered himself for us and has taken away the sin of the world. And now we give you thanks that you raised him in triumph from the dead. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again has restored us to eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them, may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains which had been gathered together and made one bread, 
so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sin, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Come, let us celebrate the feast. Draw near with faith to feed on Christ in your hearts with thanksgiving. Alleluia. pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, giver of life, in the breaking of the bread we know the risen Christ. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring new life to all creation. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, may you make, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.